never know what people are going through. It's important to remember to always be kind. Oh my god, dude, you said your tummy hurts. Just get take it. some Tums or something. Yeah. complaining about this? Uh, some people are fighting secret battles. Oh, you have no idea. Oh my god, run as me. Oh, good morning, BBs. It's too early. It is. We're back. We're back. Welcome to the first, best, and only morning show in existence. Where did anybody get a morning show or news while we were gone? They didn't. They did not. It's I'm been Anth the great news drought. I'm Anthony Carboni. And I'm Sage Ryan. And we're here to stop the great news drought with so much news. And by so much news, I mean a fair amount of news. Yeah, I would say a medium number of news. Sage. Yes. We went on a little trip. We did. There were no shows last week, and in case uh, you didn't see any of our many social media posts about it, we were in Seattle, Washington. We were in Seattle, Washington, the windy city. It rained? The city of brotherly love, Seattle, Washington. Yes. The Big Apple. Right. And uh, we were there to uh, play League of Legends. Yeah. Because we often get called on for our... Uh, for our expertise in League of Legends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and by often, I mean last weekend. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, so they flew us to Seattle and we played League of Legends against two professionals for the Crown Channel. And you know what? We won a round. Uh, and we, all the other rounds were a draw. So we, we won. We basically swept is what I want to say. Yeah. And we did it fair and square and we did it with no assistance. And uh, we did it with, uh, with, with sportsmanship and kindness. And, Some of us did. And uh, True. you can watch the VOD and you should because we're eSports now. We wanted to do this one last episode of It's Too Early <laughs> before we swap this over to an eSports channel. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. uh, that's where the money is and that's where our future is. And so... That's exactly what Comcast says. <laughs> Anyways, everybody, welcome back to the show. We're very glad that you're here. Thank you for starting your morning with us. I want to start with the biggest of news. The thing that happened this morning, we got to open with it. We got to get right to it. I did. I did make some pretty good oatmeal this morning. The Love and Thunder trailer the drop. The Love and Thunder trailer uh, drop. That's right. That's uh, what it was. Let's take a look at it together. And hey, everybody, all of our beautiful, beautiful pals in chat. Everybody just just sit down for a minute, put your hands in a, a little bit of a prayer clasp and say, Dear Disney, please do not strike us down for watching the trailer. Please don't copyright strike us for this. You put the trailer out for a reason. We're not just posting the trailer. We're talking over it and adding commentary. But also, what about all those giant YouTube channels that just repost your trailer? I'm not trying to do that thing where I'm like, but what about them? Why aren't they in trouble? But also, but what about them? Why are they in trouble? May we rest in monetization, fair use. Okay, now let's try to watch this trailer. I feel good about it. I guess Bearing said fuck off. Bearing said fuck, fuck right off. Also, there's the music issue. Cause the oh, yeah, that, that is some copywritten music. Let's see what happens, baby. Or if our VOD gets muted. Who could say? Who can say? I'm going to go ahead and do... This. Why are my earrings falling out? What is he, what are you what's going on? What's going on in your life? That's <laughs> too much happening. Are you on the correct Wi-Fi? I'm on the correct everything. It's giving a struggle. I think it'll be fine once I hit play. Mm. Okay then. Let's see what happens. Uh, 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 uh. Hands were once used There's for our battle. boy. Now but there was also somebody else in that run. Mm -hmm. I need to figure out exactly who I am. Uh, Got two beautiful boy. blue eyes again. <laughs> Quick talk when the music picks up. <laughs> I love that shot. I do too. Taika Waititi. Oh my god. Even the moment. Uh, yeah, throw things at Star Lord. <laughs> He seems to have a bit of a crush on Star-Lord, though. Does seem to have. 
a bit of, I'm going to turn this down a little bit for this portion. He does seem to have a bit of a crush on Star-Lord, which is very interesting. Hot space pirates. Okay. We kissing hot space pirates now? Okay, interesting. This was a very, like, minimal trailer, and I do appreciate that. It actually gave away very little. Now, there's new Asgard from the comics. Of course. New Asgard was in, was over Iowa, I believe. With Tessa sitting at the head of the council. We love to see it. Not me. What? Just listening. So this oh is my sort God. of like, it's sort of like a Guardians 2.5. It does feel very Guardians heavy, obviously, but wait for it. Dude, she got <laughs> jacked. Natalie got jacked. We love it. We love her. Natalie got, Natalie was like, I'm putting on the mask for this. I'm Thor now. I love it. I love it. I love new Thor. Um, there was a toy leak, as there always is, before this, um, before this trailer came out. Mm -hmm. And they did show Natalie, and they, they called her Mighty Thor. Okay. So there's Thor, and then there's Mighty Thor. You know, as much as we've had the same conversation with, like, the Captain America mm -hmm. issue, where it's like, but that is Captain America. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Um, for the sake of a lot of their audience also being children... I understand the differentiation. Yeah. And I appreciate that at least it's like, okay, well, we know Mighty Thor. Yeah. You know. It was originally Miss Thor. Miss Thorette. Right. And then they changed it to they changed it to Mighty Thor. But even the um, I'm thrilled it's not that. <laughs> even the uh Odinson mm -hmm. uh action figure had a different name. He wasn't just Thor either. Mm -hmm. He has a different name when he's wearing his cool his his I wanna be Star Lord outfit. Yeah. Um, so he also was not just called Thor, which I appreciate. They're, they're not calling one of them Thor and the other something else. Right. Uh, I don't want to give away what they call that Thor, but, um, I do like that it's blank Thor for both of them. Yes, absolutely. One doesn't like, you know, Jason and then Jason V, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, it, they're both, Sam Wilson is Captain America. Yes. So they're both Captain America. The, yeah. the pro you know, we haven't had the issue yet where we've had two Captain Americas running around and had to like deal with that. Right. Uh, but I like th I like the way they dealt with it here. Um, Tesseract Dragon, aptly named in the live studio audience, mm -hmm. said, "What got me was the cracks in Mjolnir. Mm -hmm. Mjolnir. Mm -hmm. Mjolnir. 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 It's Mjolnir. too early to say things with any yeah. kind of umlauts over them. The reassembled um, Mjolnir is a big deal. Yeah, and so that means it's the same one seen in Thor three. What's also interesting about this is this is the first." Marvel individual character to get four movies. Mm -hmm. Big boy Thor, big, big boy. Big boy Thor. And that's not like news we've known that was coming up, but like. It's also like. Wow. Hemsworth is the one that wanted to stick around. Hemsworth is, and also, they, they just got Taika Waititi doing it. I know. They, You're not really, gonna, they don't want to stop that. Listen, we've really had like two and a half Thor movies. Right. Like, if you put the good parts of Thor and Dark World together, you get like one movie. I cannot separate them in my brain. I don't remember which is from which. Oh, I you... saw them at the time, and I do not have the ability to separate what was in what in my brain. I will guarantee you 90% of, of those memories are from the first Thor, and mm -hmm. you've basically forgotten Dark World. Yeah, probably. Dark World is I remember is very specific elements of Dark World, and that's about it. Yeah, Dark, um, World, Dark World is... <sighs> Dark World's fine. <laughs> really does like being Thor. Yeah, that makes sense. And I'm very excited about this, and it's a great introduction to Natalie's, uh, you know, take on Thor. Mm -hmm. It's a great trailer. I actually like that they gave us very little on it. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice that it's not one of those trailers where it's just like, here's the whole story laid out for you. Right. Um, and I think that's just because it's like, there's going to be so much silliness in this. Yeah. There's going to be so much silliness. And they didn't silliness. show us a lot of the silliness. Mm -mm. It was actually a relatively serious trailer, at least as far as a Taika Waititi Thor movie goes mm -hmm. and what we like actually expect from this film. So it's going to be very interesting that uh, I'm, I'm hoping that they continue to do that with future trailers because I would prefer you save the jokes so I can laugh at them in the movie and not spoil all of the funny parts. Uh, it looks like we got a little bit of Zeus in that trailer which I don't think is going to figure in as much as they would like to have you believe by showing that that shot. Yeah. Because we know that the we know that the villain is Gore the God Butcher. Mm hmm. Uh, 
I don't know. I have a feeling they're introducing some gods just to have them get murdered. Yeah, that makes sense. You know? Yeah, some brief introduction gods. I think I think you're going to get some funny Zeus stuff and then Gore is going to going to do murder. And that's the other thing is we didn't see any of the any of Gore the God Butcher. We saw no Christian Nothing. Bale. That's going to be a big reveal. Yeah. There's going to be a separate trailer just for his reveal, I think. Yeah. That's just, man, people have been waiting it's it's gotten to that. It has gotten to that point on the internet where anytime Marvel is posting something, it's like, "Where's the Love and Thunder trailer?" Mm-hmm. Which I've never understood that crowd. You know what I mean? Like the trailer's coming, the movie has a release date, right? Regardless of whatever happens, you know when you will be seeing the movie. Yeah. What's the what? What, what are is you with doing? that? What are you doing? Look, we would love to see a trailer, but like, also, <laughs> Marvel's not going to be like, oh shit person with the egg picture on Twitter really wants to see the trailer. We should oh, probably drop no. it. Um, King Sassafras says, I need more of the blue-haired pirate person. Yeah, space pirates. I would love to know more about this blue-haired space pirate. Listen, space pirates is what I'm about. It's who I am. It's what I want in my life. Mm-hmm. All space pirates all the time, I'd be super happy. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. 24-7 pa- space pirates. I can absolutely agree with that. Um, some audience reactions. G4 said uh, one of Loki's last things that he said to Thor um, was the sun will shine on us again. And the trailer starts and has Thor bathed in light uh, and sunlight. I think that that it could be absolutely kind of symbolic of that. Absolutely. Um, which is very interesting. We obviously got to see the like growing up of mm-hmm. Thor. That's going to be a lot about Thor trying to figure out his place in the world mm-hmm. now. Somebody said, I wonder if uh, I wonder if Zeus is setting up Hercules, which would be fun. Thor and Hercules not bros <laughs> very fun very fun dynamic in the comic and i would love to see some thor and hercules and i would also just love to see some marvel hercules how weird would it be if if all of this leads to like eventually marvel having a hercules movie that'd be wild duh. that would be very confusing for disney yeah <laughs> that would be very confusing for disney it'd be so strange i'm not against it in the like tone of Thor, no, of the current Thor film. Well, I also just think it would be really weird if we had some sort of existing Hercules in modern media, uh-huh. and it was the Marvel version, right? Like, I don't want another regular Disney Hercules. No, Hercules is perfect. Hercules is wonderful. Um, and we've all forgotten about the Hercules animated series, which is important. It's important to forget about that. Yes, even though we love it when Tate Donovan gets a Hercules check. Um, somebody was like, uh, somebody said the brightly colored armor on Thor. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. the Kirby style armor. Yeah. That's nice. I like seeing that. And I think we've moved towards that with a good few characters now. I think we're going into a phase of the MCU where they're seeing very much their place in this. Um, and they're like, sure, DC, go ahead, go do your little fucking angry stuff. You know, go yeah. have a pissy time and we'll see you over here. <laughs> well, and I think that's, that's also just something Taika brought in heavily, heavily, heavily during uh, Ragnarok. Yeah. Where he was just like, it's all like to the point where they were printing Kirby backgrounds and putting them on the walls in, in Sakaar. And so, you know, he really wants to do like a fun Technicolor movie. And then, of course, James Gunn brought that in. as I think I feel like Marvel is doing very much if it's cosmic, if it's in space, mm-hmm. it's bright, it's colorful, it's weird and it's silly. And I love that. Yeah. That's my that's my favorite thing. And then Earth can Earth can be Earth and yeah. things can be tough on Earth. But in space, shit's wild. We got dogs in space suits out here, bro. Yeah. Things is weird. Yeah, that's um, fair. I think it'll be interesting to see how this ties into Guardians 3 as well. It feels like this is Guardians 3. <laughs> There's a lot of Guardians in the trailer and And we have a lot of Thor and Guardians, so it makes sense. But I'm, like I'm hoping like <clears throat> Don't over Guardians it. Guardians are getting their own movie. I'm hoping they're in it for a chunk. Agreed. You know, a, a nice little chunk. Um, yeah, I think that's the thing is I'm bummed that it's Guardians because another Guardians movie is coming so soon that it's like, nah, I would love to see, I would love to visit and see what's up with some other people in the universe. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, because they're, because they're setting up whatever, uh, I mean, they're setting up Kang. To be to be a big bad, mm-hmm. um, so they need to start setting up what's going on out in space. They need to start setting up um, all of this, like 
all this cosmic timeline-y stuff because you've got Doctor Strange on Earth dealing with like the more mystical Earth-based part of it. Mm -hmm. So here we're, we're, we're really connecting to, I think more than any other Marvel series, Loki is probably the one that's taking us into phase four. Yeah. Uh, Loki with their introduction of Kang and the TVU and multiple timelines. You know, the TVU sees it as multiple timelines. Doctor Strange and the rest of the magic community sees it as multiverses. Right. Um, so I think they're setting up, I mean, you've got to set up the Nova Corps. You've got to set up all of the cosmic heroes, right? Mm -hmm. Adam Warlock is out there somewhere. Yeah. Um, so it makes sense that the Guardians are there. Mm -hmm. um, but I like, I do hope it's just like, and the Guardians are here, and it's been 20 minutes, and the Guardians got to go. Bye. Because mm -hmm. they're, they're cramming a lot into this movie. There's a lot of disparate threads in this movie. There are. Um, Rex Verity said, uh, the Guardians in Thor, I think that it's going to be like how Captain America Civil War was really an Avengers movie. Mm, yeah, it could I could be. see that. I don't want that for it, but I could absolutely see that. Um, somebody earlier in the chat also asked if we think Gamora is coming back. Uh, I think they set a thread for that, that it would be weird if they didn't follow through at some point, but it's definitely not happening in a Thor movie. No, that's 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 a Guardian story. We might get a little hint. Yeah. You know, that might even be like the reason the reason they take off. Yeah. The Guardians might be like, oh, we got to go because Gamora's out there and Thor's going to be like, well, I don't know what that means. But one time I had a dream and I flew away from the Avengers. So I get it. Yeah. The Avengers were like, the world is going to be destroyed by a giant robot. And Thor's like, I don't know, man. Good luck. I got to go. I got. I had a dream where I didn't get invited to a sex party. And now I got to check out what's going on in space. Best wishes. <laughs> so there you go. Um, you know, in terms of cosmic and space piracy mm -hmm. and all of the things that I want to see, D&D uh, &D is doing a D&D &D direct. D&D &D is doing a direct. And, and I think it's going to be all spell jammers. Yeah? Because that's what I want. Okay, so you think it's all about you. Understood. I want all space pirate spell jammers. So here's a few things that I have. Um, some thoughts that I have around this D&D &D Direct. Go on. One of them is uh, that it's almost time for what would typically be D&D &D, um, Live. Right. And D&D &D Live last year was on the G4 channel. Right. Uh, previously, D&D &D Live was an in-person event. Um held locally that people all from the industry gathered. They made big announcements during it. They had a lot of the like official Dungeons and Dragons shows come out and do live plays. Um, and they went in a very different direction with that with G4 last year. And I'm going to be honest, it didn't land. No. And I, you know, I think, I think it had, I mean, like a lot of things last year, I think it had to do with the fact that an in-person event just wasn't going to go down. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't you an in-person event. That's the thing is it couldn't mm -hmm. be. Yes. It, it just couldn't be. So if you're going to try to get it to the most people, Maybe G4 was a good partner for that, but it just clearly wasn't. Yeah, it just um, that did not end up being the case in the way that that played out. It didn't have any of the spirit of D&D &D live because it simply wasn't put on by the D&D &D community. The people that you saw, um, you know, we had lovely guests from the D&D &D community, but for the most part, it was not coming from the call wasn't coming from inside the house and it needed to. No, it was a lot of like. Who are, the, who are the funniest, silliest celebs that we can get? Which was always part of a D&D &D Live, but it wasn't the whole thing about D&D &D Live. But this turned into multiple campaigns that were just about, here are the celebrities that we got to play D&D &D on television. Which is so, weird. Yeah, so with that in mind, that's typically in May. It is April right now. We've got no announcement of a D&D &D Live this year, but also no like, hey, we're not doing it. Mm -hmm. Instead, what we got is an announcement of a Dungeons & Dragons Direct, which is happening on Thursday, I think, whatever date the 21st is. Yeah. Tell me what day of the week that is. Um, and it is happening at 9 a.m. PT. Uh, and I also, we might, maybe we'll do something and we'll go live and we'll like cover it live essentially, but it's being put on directly by Wizards of the Coast. Um, spell Jammer is a thing that a lot of people are asking, but also on April 1st, they put up an April Fool's Day about Spell Jammer. Mm -hmm. And that makes me think that uh, they would not like kind of um, kneecap their own announcement. Yeah. Like that, no. so I don't think that we're getting spell jammer anytime soon. Probably all spell jammer though. Probably all spell jammer. I, also, I, I don't appreciate that they turned spell jammer into an April Fools. I think spell jammer <laughs> is April. April wins. It's an it. It's an April. It's an April cools is what it is. So they said they will be going uh, showcasing books, video games, entertainment, and more. So here's a few things that we know that are coming up in Dungeons and Dragons: spell a movie. Jammer. Oh, a movie. 
Let's go down the actual list, I beg of you. A movie. A movie. Okay. Uh, we know that a new edition is coming in the next two years, mm -hmm. which is very, very interesting. We also know that we've been getting republishing of some of the original books, either in different art styles or in more like condensed packages, which is very interesting. So mm -hmm. I see something around that. They have obviously been doing those like three sets of books lately. Is there a... Is there a book, a classic book that they haven't done that you think is likely to get done or that you'd like to see get done other than Spelljammer? You know, 5e was my first edition, so yeah. I have no emotional ties to any. Uh, Spelljammer has always been actually at the top of my list of games that I've never gotten to play in and would really like. Um, but I'm also team more original content. Yeah. New stuff. Uh, because a lot of Dungeons and Dragons did not age very well. And then the other thing we know, uh, which happened while we were gone, is um, Wizards of the Coast under Hasbro acquired D and D Beyond? Right, that's huge. So I'm I'm assuming there will be some kind of conversation about that. I I hope they also said video games. So you know, Baldur's Gate three, uh, Dark Alliance, um, quite possibly. Uh, which do you think you know, we'll see? A, do you think we'll see a little teaser trailer for that movie? Yeah, I do. Little little little. Chris Pine, little fantasy Chris Pine. Maybe? I think we'll get a teaser for the movie. I think so too. Uh, I'm very interested because the tone of the movie. I I actually am more interested in the movie than I've ever been. Yeah. Ever since uh, Chris Pine gave that interview where he was like, "It's a little silly because it's about you know, it's about D and D, which no matter how serious you try to make a D and D game, it's gonna get a little silly sometimes." Yeah, I think if you're doing that as like a base movie, that's a great place to start. And then mm -hmm. I see a full Dungeons and Dragons cinematic universe. Because man, how do you summarize Dungeons and Dragons, right? How I do mean, you summarize Dungeons and Dragons into one movie? I no, summarize it into we one We separate word. out the planes. We do. What, Anthony? Can you guess? Bullshit. Spelljammer. Uh, same thing. <laughs> wow! Not Spelljammer, from you. <laughs> Uh, I was surprised they didn't already own D&D Beyond. Late of creation of the live yeah. studio audience. No, but you're right. It's it's whatever this central, I think whatever this central film is, it'll be a little, it'll be like when they started uh, the Marvel Universe. It'll be a little, uh, it'll be a self-contained story. It'll mm -hmm. be a little simplified. Mm -hmm. It'll be a, kind of like a narrow view of one area of of D&D. &D, and then they're able to spin it off into a bazillion different things. Um, like which, a Spelljammer movie. Like, oh, Although, you know, it is the golden age of television, and I think a prestige Spelljammer series. Firefly style? I mean, yeah. I'm not going to say no. Yeah. I'm not going to say no to that. Um, but no, the D&D &D Beyond thing is, is, is fascinating. It makes sense. D&D &D mm -hmm. Beyond has made life so easy for a lot of people, especially people who are just starting out, you know, to just be able to, like, plug everything in and go. Mm -hmm. It's lovely. It's absolutely lovely. Um, a lot of people are saying the same thing of, I hope that when you buy a physical book, you get a digital code with it now. I hope so as well. So, Everybody has been complaining at D&D &D Beyond for that for so long. And D&D &D Beyond has had to be like, guys, we don't, we, we don't own those books. We can't do that. We license the books to have yeah. them online. Please so that's the huge get out of thing, our DMs. Right? Is, is this, is such a, this has been such a big, uh, a big product that everybody has been using, but it's always been alongside of D&D. &D. Mm -hmm. um, and so you would think that in the beginning, D&D &D uh, wizards were like, well, we're going to license this and then maybe we're going to try to build our own version of this on the inside. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're going to, because, you know, why on, a, on an infinite timeline, why share the profits for a platform like this? Yeah. This is something that we should probably build. They built it first and they're the best one. We'll go with them. I appreciate them doing that instead of building a competitor. I got scared for a while because we all knew that this was inevitable, especially mm -hmm. during the pandemic when so many games became remote and so many games are staying remote, you know, when this eventually ends. Um, people have made friends over the internet that they're not going to be able to ever play in person with and games are going to stay online. Yeah. So I was concerned that D and D would try and create their own service, and then they would pull the licensing from D and D Beyond right. because D and D Beyond is a great fucking site. I mean, it's well built, it's easy to use, and it's genuinely changed accessibility for Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, and that's that. There were one of two ways this was going to go, right? Like Beyond was either going to get acquired, or mm -hmm. they were going to get taken out by whatever Wizards built. And this is, I think, the best. The best possible timeline, for sure. One of the main things that I hope happens with this is we get the return of Unearthed Arcana back mm -hmm. to D&D &D Beyond. 
That would be great. Yeah. Uh, they pulled their Unearthed Arcana a few months ago, maybe a year ago now. Um, and as a huge fan of UA and somebody who is simply not going to build my own character sheet, yeah, that's great. Uh, I am only ever going to do it on D and D Beyond. I'm sorry. Uh, I also hope that they do add a virtual battle map. I, I definitely see that in the cards that they build out some kind of. Um, yeah, I think I think D and D Beyond didn't want to build out too much new functionality because new functionality is very expensive, mm -hmm. and when you only have the temporary blessing, you're like how. How much do we, how broad is our scope for this product? Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, like D and D wasn't building anything like this on their side because they were like, well, do we have to then compete with this product that we've given our blessing to? Now that they're actually within the walls and they can, you know, experiment with more stuff and not worry about having the plug pulled out on them. Yeah. I think we're going to see a <laughs> lot of new stuff come to D and D beyond. Right. Um, so that's very exciting. That is very exciting. Um, like I said, we'll do some kind of coverage of this D&D Direct, whether it's just talking about it on Friday or maybe going live to discuss it uh, when it happens. I did get uh, an email that I'm allowed to like live stream it. Oh. Um, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, I think this is cool. I'm excited for it. I would rather this than, um, I don't know, watch celebrities play D&D on G4. Yeah, sometimes, you know, <laughs> here's the thing with a, with, with a streaming a live stream. My ADHD don't do that so good. Mm -hmm. I like to watch the live stream and then comment on it. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just putting out. I'm just putting out personal preferences. That's all. I'm just saying. Yep. Um, Anthony, mm. in gaming news, I have a game for you. Tell me. I have just the game made specifically for Anthony's. I feel like just by looking at. This layout, you might have a little bit of an oh, idea. Oh no, it's a clicker. It's a clicker, Anthony. It's Tell a pondering me. the orb clicker. Oh, I love to ponder my orb. So uh, catch me on Friday nights pondering my orb. So this is um this is the combination of two worlds: cookie clicker and pondering the orb. Uh, this is literally just a clicker game. Y'all have seen a million clicker games. They just reskin essentially what the things are. You click, you upgrade for more clicks. There is no real end point for it. It is simply clicks. Love it. How many clicks can you have? And then renaming them. Um, this is out on Ish.io and Steam. It is, I think it's a free to play. Let me check. Um, I wonder it's $4.99 on Steam. Does it say it's approved for Steam Deck? I want to make sure <laughs> that this, I want to make sure this orb pondering technology works on my new Steam Deck. Uh, you know, let's see here. Would it list it on Steam? It would. I'm I think most, it might I'm, not. I'm just, I'm just new boot goofing. I know. I'm just new boot goofing with I you. Know. Hey, it's just a new boot goof. It's not on Steam Deck criminally. Wow. Wow. I got that Steam Deck over the weekend. Yeah. And? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's a Steam Deck. Here, you know, everybody, all the reviews that I saw that were like, yeah, it's pretty big, but it's balanced and it's wonderful. And when you have it in your arms, it feels really good. And then uh, it's not like, yeah, the fans run a little bit, but like when you're playing a game, you don't realize, yo, the Steam Deck is big and loud. Yo, the Steam Deck is too big and it's loud. And everybody who's saying that those two things aren't true, are f their hearts are full of lies and misdeeds. It's, t it's I understand all the, I understand all the reasons. I understand all the, you know, oh, it has to be that big because they wanted to put a big screen and all the tech and blah, 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 and they made it comfy. and le I understand. It's still too big. Huh. It's too big for a thing you're going to carry around with you. Yeah. It's like, it's like this big. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm like holding my arms. I'm like, this is like, it's like a lap desk. It's too much. Yeah, I would like to play around with a Steam Deck, but I don't think I am the audience for a Steam Deck. I would hate to carry around a big thing. I should have brought it this morning so we could compare the size of you to the Steam Deck. Oh yeah, to the PS5. To the PS5. Right. To everything because it's it's a it's two chunks. Uh Flannel Fries wants to know, is it too big for tub gaming? No, I can I can tub game pretty comfortable. but remember, 
I also have a desk, a tub desk. Right. And that's the thing. Like with my Retroid, I don't need the tub desk. I'm like this and I'm like playing DS games and it's uh-huh. good and it's, it's tiny and it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like uh or like the analog pocket, you're just sitting there. You don't need the tub desk, but you put it in there for a layer of safety because mm-hmm. you don't want to submerge your handheld. Right. Uh the Steam Deck is like you gotta have your arms on the tub desk and you gotta be like, it's a lot. Anthony, while we were in Seattle. Yes. There was um during our first day there. Uh, we didn't end up with much work to do. So we went and we got food and whatnot. And then we came back to the hotel rooms and we said, break. So we could go both take baths. Yeah. <laughs> we split off and we went to our rooms to go separately, take nice little baths and come back in a couple hours and hang out again. We were just like, shh, bath break. Bath break. I sent her a, I sent her a video about the different um, about the different aesthetic types of of uh, of like internet music yeah uh, that we had not seen yet it just mm-hmm. popped up in my feed and we both like just sat in separate bathtubs in separate rooms and watched that very good video yeah <sighs> and you know what I brought my switch Anthony I did a little bathtub gaming I finally whoa did, it. did I we did convert her you did, know did we convert her to the bathtub gaming i don't think this is a thing i'll do at home yeah um because i don't take baths at home i don't have time mm-hmm. uh but in a nice hotel room absolutely i had right. a great time i've been playing story of uh, story of seasons you make a little time because it's a because it's a lu- it's a little luxury just for you you take <laughs> a little you take a little 20 minutes and you have a nice little bath and you play your game mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. very nice mm-hmm. i'm telling you if you're if you ain't soaking in gaming what are you doing uh that was an we had an anthony story for anthony's Mm -hmm. i've now got a story for me specifically for me because it's about club penguin oh all right let's talk about club penguin club penguin is a children's game if you do not know or was a children's game past tense highly marketed to children of my age demographic Mm -hmm. when i was in like middle school approximately the biggest fucking deal in the world eventually it was acquired by disney they put out ds games it became massive and then uh quickly plummeted after the fact yeah the big um we watch a channel called Izzy. Mm-hmm. Izzy's. Izzy's. Uh, there are lots of Z's and Y's in that, but mm-hmm. um, she did a really wonderful, it was like an hour long about the rise and fall of Club Penguin. I which knew was, all of that already. Which was very good. I know you did. Mm-hmm. I learned some new things. No, nothing new. But if you want to, um, but if you want to uh, it, learn the full backstory of Club Penguin, that's a great place to start. That is a great place to start. So... Uh, after Disney acquired Club Penguin, they had a few good years, uh, mm-hmm. and then it was pretty much gone and for then, some reason. Eventually, and then they euthanized all the penguins. Oh God! Uh, they did end up taking Club Penguin down after a good few years, and after getting as much as they felt as they could about it, and people weren't really paying for memberships anymore. It just wasn't really the thing for the next generation. Now, naturally, when a lot of children's games, in particular, go down. <laughs> When a lot of like children's games or nostalgic games uh, get taken offline, it's very popular for people online to do something, which is a version rewritten. Mm-hmm. Um, so Club Penguin rewritten, 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 Club Penguin rewritten uh, has been operating no on the internet near. pretty much since the shutdown of Club Penguin. Uh, you might also know Toontown rewritten. I've streamed it. Uh, but Disney's not fucking happy about it. You know, here's this weird thing. Disney has entire properties. They own so much. 30%, I think, of all of all media properties and all media outlets that uh, we consider to be just properties. Disney owns. Mm-hmm. And they have a lot of stuff that they leave on ice for a while. Mm-hmm. But when people make fan projects, depending on how big they are and mm-hmm. whether they're making money, even if they're just taking donations... It becomes a thing where the lawyers come out. Yes. So in this case, the lawyers very much came out. And not only did they file a complaint um, under copyright law, they seized the website and arrested three people involved. What the fuck is going on? Imagine getting arrested for running Club Penguin rewritten. Yo. This happened in the UK. Holy shit. That's, that is wild to me. That is wild. Uh, Arrests. Physical arrests. So they have currently been released under investigation and uh, agreed to aid with the police investigation. They agreed to sign over the website to control. But like, I can't believe they initially arrested people. Now, 
being arrested for distributing materials that infringe on copyright is an incredibly, incredibly rare occurrence. We see a lot of people get fined. We see a lot of people get taken to court. We see a lot of, we see a lot of shutdown notices and things of that kind. Physical arrests, that's wild. Now, were they, were they charging for Club Penguin rewritten? As far as I knew, they were not. Um, so that's wild to me. That's what's really, really interesting. So there's not any information in these articles here about what the structure was for it. Uh, but I've signed on to Club Penguin rewritten and you had access to everything without the membership that you would typically need when I was a kid and played it. Which is very, very interesting. That's fascinating. I mean, honestly, the, the charges were just, as far as we can see, suspicion of distrib distributing materials infringing copyright. That's the, that's the one actual charge that is related in this article. I think that's fascinating. The big question that I have, mm -hmm. you know, you're talking about Toontown rewritten. You're talking, well, the big question I have is how did society get to this point? Uh, the second part, the largest question I have is you've got things like Toontown rewritten. And Toontown rewritten has not been taken out. What does Disney have planned for Club Penguin? That's my question. That has to be it. That they are still planning to do something with the IP so they don't want a variation of it up. You'd think so. I, you would hope so. You would hope they didn't just arrest these, these what have to be very young adults mm -hmm. for running a Club Penguin lookalike site. Uh, they must be planning something, and I would imagine that they didn't want Club Penguin rewritten to become too popular or get too much of the fan base love so they wouldn't have to like somehow involve that in their plans for whatever this new club penguin is this is fucking wild it's fucking wild so when you go to the site it just goes to the city of london police and says this site has been taken over by Operation Creative, Police Intellectual Property Crime Unit. Operation Creative is one of those real misleading names, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Operation Creative sounds like a sounds like an educational series that they would show us at school when we had a substitute. Like, welcome to Operation Creative. And yet, and, no. Um, Drake Sparta said, didn't they start to monetize? That's that's my big question. I don't know. We I, they must have. I've been looking through the subreddit to try and find what their payment structures were. Again, I've been on the site, and typically on Club Penguin, you would have to pay a monthly membership to get access to most um, like items in game, things like clothing, um, furniture items, houses, stuff like that. That was not the case at the time. Uh, what I will say is that uh, part of it is that they believe uh, it's just correlated to them stealing code, mm. which is an issue. Um, I know that Toontown Rewritten has some specifications of how they've gone about things that haven't gotten shut down. Um, now, everything that I see here about Club Penguin Rewritten says that it's free. Now, there was something called Club Penguin Island that they had, um, and that was a four ninety nine membership subscription per month. So I think there it is. that's where it comes in. Club Penguin Island introduces a modern 3D design and enhanced features. Yep. So they had built out a better version of the game than initially existed, essentially, and were charging for it. Now, that's probably where a lot of this came in. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Ventatsu is saying the city of London police are notorious for these takedowns. Now, t the site's being taken down for copyright law. That happens. Um, seeing that site you know the way every country does it is different the way every city does it apparently mm -hmm. is different um what's the wild part to me is physical arrests i don't know if that is normal for the yeah. uk so that's the thing is everybody's like but it's trademark we know why the site was taken down that's a fully understood concept um we can read uh but it's the idea that three people were arrested in that and that's what's a huge escalation of this and we're trying to understand what the bigger deal of it is than yeah. a lot of these sites that we've seen that have had takedowns for copyright infringement. It isn't normal to arrest people. Yeah, that's three people. That's very intense. Uh, and like I said, they were released and right now they're just going into the investigation. But like, damn. Level Up Together says they also don't let people sell unofficial merch for Club Penguin on Etsy. So Club Penguin seems to be a very locked down property. Um, I can't imagine why. They're working on something behind closed doors. They have to be. I just, like, then why is the site, like, why did they take down the subscription service and, like, the site that was keeping it relevant for kids? 
Um, I think probably a total rebuild or a total reimagine. Well, it may not have it may not have been something that they did right away. That's why I'm wondering why it's starting to happen now. Right. So it does. I'm guessing there's got to be something, whether it's media or games, like other forms of media or games. It's probably just NFTs. Ah. It's probably a bunch of different colors of penguin. Uh, the Club Penguin rewritten uh, subreddit right now is uh, a, a blaze, a blaze with activity about this. Um, oh, shit. Hashtag Penguin Hope. Oh, shit. Hashtag Penguin Hope. <laughs> hey, everyone. Hashtag Penguin Hope. Oh, but there is. There's people in here who are like, man, I've been collecting items for four years. Now it's just gone and that sucks. And they put a lot of time into it. I totally do understand that. I mean, that's the trick with that's the trick mm-hmm. with anything that's fan run, right? Like yeah. there are I've logged on a couple times. There are people that run Fantasy Star online servers mm-hmm. for the original Fantasy Star online, which was a Dreamcast and GameCube game. Mm-hmm. And people run these things and they make new quests and they do all this stuff. And it's all sort of like with the understanding that if this ever gets too big, or Sega ever decides it's not okay, that all disappears. Yeah. And you have to kind of go in with, unfortunately, with that mindset, right? Because if you're doing a fan, if you're mm-hmm. doing a fan project that is based on copyright or is basically a carbon copy. Yes, and it was. Uh, Club Penguin rewritten was all of the functionality of Club Penguin. Mm-hmm. You got to understand that at some point, you're going to be asked like, hey man, could you not, do the club penguin anymore right absolutely even if they did it in a cool way which yeah. they did not this is the least cool way this is the least cool way to disney think lawyers could send one letter do you know what i mean yeah absolutely you could send one letter and be like hey you gotta knock off the penguin uh level up together said the kids who played club penguin back in the day are now old enough to pay for nfts but smart enough not to mm-hmm. i added that part i was a kid who grew up playing club penguin they're a little too, so they're we're a little old young. enough to buy them but smart enough not to. We're in that nice in between generation. The We're right on the generation. cusp of the millennial and the Gen Z, and uh, we know better, don't we, kids? Um, speaking of things that we want to come back, Portal. Oh, oh, oh Portal. Portal, my stars, just the biggest thing. Portal and Portal Two, just the biggest thing. Valve is still using portal ip and portal concepts in uh to sell basically to sell and demonstrate new hardware right Mm -hmm. like there was aperture labs for the vive when steam started doing steam vr there's aperture desk job for the uh for the steam deck because the steam deck is one large motorized desk that whirs and hums very loud the steam deck so loud but this all started from portal uh, which just changed video games and video games writing for just about ever. Oh, absolutely. Portal 2 is one of the greatest games ever made. Uh, and one of the co-writers, Eric Wolpaw, was on the podcast Kiwi Talks this week and had some things to say about Portal. Um, said, we've got to start Portal 3. That is my message to whoever. I'm not getting any younger. We're reaching the point where it's crazy to think that we're literally going to be too old to work on Portal 3, so we should just do it. Um, Eric Wolpaw, of course, started off as uh, sort of like a games humorist writer on a, on a site called Old Man Murray, uh, which was very early internet, like pre-blog. There's another Old Man Murray. Dun, 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 dun. Wow. Um, Chet Falzek and Eric Wolpaw both started off on Old Man Murray. Uh, this, this was like in the days of Sean Baby and stuff, like mm. really old, old, old days. Um and then got hired by Valve to write Portal and just brought their just real fuck about energy to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it is weird to think that that was so long ago that these guys are like, I'll probably be retiring from games soon. Yeah. If not just retiring, period. Right. <laughs> um, but I think Valve, so here's, here's the thing about Valve though. They never need to make a game again. Right. And they've clearly moved away from the focus of games entirely, and they've moved on to other technologies. Uh, they make, they'll make less money on a game, making a game, than they make doing any of the myriad things that they do right now. And that's why when people are like, why haven't we seen Half-Life 3? It's like, well, all we can do is ruin it. Yeah. Like, you sort of get to this point where you think, like, can we live up to what everybody wants from that? Mm-hmm. Or do we just sort of 
tarnish the love of it. And and Portal is extremely beloved. That's for damn sure. And it's been so long that the expectations only grow in that. So naturally, of course, people are like, well, if you want to make Portal 3, why why can't you convince them to make it? Um, and he said he would love to, uh, but he understands that he can't make it happen by himself. He said, I could advocate it for it. It might help a little bit. But the problem is that Valve has 300 employees. And I don't know the exact breakdown, how many of them are on the production side versus Steam business side versus right. legal versus whatever. They have very few people internally working on actual games right now. And the mm -hmm. people that do uh, work on games as experiments for new hardware, like we were just talking about, you know, they're working on new platforms and new tools for people to make games because they make money on every video game sold. Every video game sold, they make money. I mean, you know, for the most part. So why would they make their own game? Um, my favorite quote from this is like, uh, Wolpa says, are you gonna make Counter-Strike go money? Probably not. But having said that, maybe every game doesn't need to make Counter-Strike go money, Gabe, mm -hmm. you know? Gabe, if you're listening, is what he literally said. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's the thing is like, do they spend time, money, and energy on prestige projects just for, just for fun and for the love of it? Mm -hmm. When like, my, I keep coming back to, I keep coming back to a lot of these remakes and and sort of soft reboots of like films and video games these days, where it's like. Do we, when we do it, is it just Matrix 4? Right. Is it major, like, is it just like, why are we doing this? And then when we do it, it's a little weird and we probably shouldn't have done it anyway. And it's entirely possible. I believe they could make a very good Portal game. Obviously, I think Portal was such a beautiful world that they created and it had a lot of opportunity. And it's also why one of those in particular that we want more of, because it's like, no, you set up a whole thing. <laughs> like, this isn't a single game story. This isn't a two game story. It could be so much more. The other, um, the it didn't other... have that, like, button that's like well it's over like the matrix did yeah you know I mean? like the matrix should be over the other thing that i think about is the number of games that have come out that like portal like became a genre yes there are so many of those games mm -hmm. with the with quirky narrator 3d puzzle gameplay first person camera like that became a whole genre and it's like well, when that became a whole genre and you had like everybody from the student to the industry level chipping away at the different uh, the different ideas that can happen within that, what do you come back and do? That's because that's the other thing. It's not just a funny game. Portal has to have like a pretty groundbreaking idea. Yes. And it's no longer a groundbreaking idea. So now what? So now what? That's a very, very valid question. Um, do you think that we ever see Portal 3? Yes or no? No, I think we see various vignettes like we've been seeing, like Day Job and uh, Aperture Labs. And we'll, mm -hmm. you know, maybe even we'll get like a like a a shorter VR thing like we got with Half-Life Alex. OK, I can see that. But I think that's I think they're uh, they're they're now like in the this sort of like Pixar thing where they make experimental shorts and they see what sticks. Yeah. You know. I, I can think, see that. Um, But I would love to see it. I, I think it's time. I think it's finally time to do the portal slash aperture universe mm -hmm. in television or film. That's what I think it's time for. I think yeah. it's time for like, not a portal series, like TV series, but like an aperture Labs series. Yes. That can start maybe with shell and portal and build from that. Agreed. I could definitely see that. I think that would be cool. Um, Speaking of immersion. Oh, my immersion. We got the Kingdom Hearts 4 trailer last week. I was immersed. We were so immersed. Um, and the internet, of course, was just so deeply invested and immersed. Yeah, so we know it was, I mean, we looked at it and we were like, that's Tokyo. Yes. So people have gotten real into it because that was like a very real portrayal of the city. Mm -hmm. And people have been like, hold on. I think I can tell where that is. And they could. So people have actually tracked back to where Sora's theoretical apartment is um, and also determined that it's expensive as fuck. Now, people are saying, I can't believe Sora lives in Aoyama. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's Sora's apartment. Remember, Sora wakes up there. I think that apartment either belongs to that girl mm -hmm. or is just a space. 
and this is not like a like they said this is an in between world. It might not be a city at all. It might just look like a city. I don't believe that's Sora's bachelor pad. No, that no. has no furniture in it. Well, it does have a mattress, so it could be He's a couch. Sora's. Oh, 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 he got the couch first. Damn. He wakes up on a couch, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. You're right. But like, look at this shot where you can see how empty it he is. He has that lamp I have. Yeah, he does. You know that lamp everybody always hits their head on? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bachelor apartments always have that lamp. Oh, no. But it's a cool lamp. I know, buddy. Should I not have that lamp? Everybody, let me know if I shouldn't have that lamp. I thought it was a cool lamp. It's a very, like, modern look to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, for a lot of people, they are trying to figure out what a um, an apartment without necessarily as much feminine influence looks like. And they get that lamp. I just thought it was a neat lamp. I know. I know. Um, <laughs> uh, ben Jack says Sora's in our world for a week and he got doxxed. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most expensive residential areas in Tokyo. No wonder it ain't got no damn furniture. <laughs> yeah. Aoyama's uh, lovely, lovely little neighborhood. Um, yeah, rugs are always a help. I have a rug. You do have a rug, and that's great. I have multiple rugs. <laughs> so we're raking up at Shibuya and realizing he has to face his toughest enemy yet. Rent. Uh, people are just clouding on this because it's, it's a real city, and that's very funny. And just the idea of, like, bringing Sora to, like, oh, this is just Earth, and this is just normal. This is just where people live. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Zora woke up with a divorce, rent due, no bitches, and regular ass shoes. That's so funny. That's genuinely so funny. Now, we actually have not seen whether he has regular ass shoes. We've seen that he we've didn't seen, have big boy shoes. We've seen his feet. We haven't seen, we haven't seen any shoes. Those, those big boy shoes might still be around. He does that whole thing barefoot. Hmm. All that building sliding and everything, which makes no sense. Wait, he's, I don't think he's barefoot in the whole trailer. He's barefoot through that whole trailer. Really? Yeah. That's Jack, premium content. That? We didn't have to pay extra for feet. He had shoes in the fighting bit, did he? I thought he was sliding around barefoot. Yeah. I remember there being shoes in the trailer. Um, So they're saying that an apartment in that area uh, is probably about $2,000. And if anyone wanted to buy it, it would be about a $1.2 million apartment if translated to US dollars. Oh, okay. So the most expensive neighborhood in Tokyo is standard LA prices. Why am I not living in Tokyo? Why am I not living in Tokyo? I'll ask the question a third time. Why am I not living in Tokyo? It's apparently the same fucking price but I get to live in the nicest neighborhood. Because during the pandemic, we both looked into what we could possibly have to offer to allow us to immigrate to uh, Japan, and we determined that we have absolutely nothing to offer so they would never give us citizenship. I did find out an artist visa is very easy over there. All right. But I'll tell you what. You're not speaking Japanese. A lot of people living in Tokyo aren't speaking Japanese. That's very true. A lot of them are fighting heartless. And they're barefoot. Sometimes. Uh, in our last piece of gaming news, we did get some gameplay uh, footage from Steel Rising, and we've done some um, some little, little previews of trailers and stuff like that for Steel Rising uh, over the last couple months. Yeah, this five minutes of gameplay that they just released, um, it do be a Souls-like. Mm -hmm, very much so. It is very much a Souls-like, but I'll tell you what. I do enjoy the 18th century France vibe. Mm -hmm. I do enjoy that you are a ceramic Marie Antoinette ass looking robot with that fights with fans. Yeah. I think it's really lovely. The lag is on our end, just so you know. Um, but I will say it's not an incredible looking like character model movement. No. I was unimpressed by that. I think it has some interesting ideas because of the way that it is this kind of like marionette doll the way that it bends in certain areas i find very appealing and that does look different but some of the ways it moves is a a little not just like i'm a weird doll strange and just straight up strange yeah like it's just clearly kind of, clearly a smaller team you yeah. know they put the style where they could yeah um i think the i think the weapons and items like the like the fan turning into a shield and all that stuff um i think that's kind of nice right Mm -hmm. Like, 
it, it's an interesting take. It's so fascinating because every Souls like was eight times more interesting to me before Elden Ring. Yeah. You know? I get that. Um, I want to move a little ahead here so you can see another, maybe another area. Yeah. It was a somewhat repetitive gameplay trailer for me. Yeah. Like, I, I didn't need to sit through five minutes of that. But I, mean, I do think that these, like, monsters are very interesting. Like, yeah, the designs of these characters are genuinely fascinating and very cool. Yeah, the steampunk, the like, the 18th century France, like, gilded steampunk aesthetic is very good. Yeah, the animations aren't that interesting, and the environments were a little uh, so, lackluster for me. They were the, a little generic. They're a little, yeah, They. I was going to say they have an asset flip vibe to them, mm -hmm. um, where it's just, like, these. this is a pretty generic city square. Um. I, I wish I I wish they had done a little bit more with it, but once again, it's a much smaller team than a than a you know, than a From Software. But uh, I think before you do a gameplay demo, I mean the designs of the all the designs are really nice, very cool. Like the art team is killing it. But I think if you're gonna release a a this big a chunk of gameplay, that says to me that this is pretty done. locked. Yeah. And this is this is kind of how it's gonna look and feel. And I wish there was just a little bit more to it. It feels a little empty. I'm gonna give my very subjective, it does feel a little bit empty. And also I'm gonna give my very subjective opinion on why this doesn't really land for me is uh to me the like darkness and grayness of the world. Um, like when you have dark like when you have Dark Souls games to mm -hmm. get that from, if you're going to create something that is a souls like when we clearly just got Elden Ring you have to do something is that is different that you can offer that they can't. And if this mm -hmm. had a like souls like gameplay style, had these character models and these like monster models, mm -hmm. um, but in a more colorful world, brighten it up in something that like had that very like interesting kind of steampunky yeah. approach to like Renaissance. I think that would be really fucking cool. Yeah. When you think about something like like a death's door that kind of messed with the perspective, or you think about something like an ashen, which went with like a very different art style. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, if you're going to do, if you're going to do like 18th century France. Yeah. Do the bright colors, do the sunshine, the pastels. do the pastels, like make it really like, you don't have to make it look like, like every other souls, souls game, you right. know? Yeah. Color yeah, so yeah. like colorful balloons everywhere, big outfits, wigs, like colorful buildings and those like soft like pastel colors. I don't know. Like they did that big gold robot that's like rolling around on that ball and it's like imagine that in the sunshine with the light glinting off of it. Yeah. Like why hide that in, why hide that in like a cloudy day? Yeah, make it a Monet painting. Yeah, yeah. Exactly what I'm thinking. Um so that would be cool for me, but obviously that is also a very subjective opinion. That's mm -hmm. not a um like that's not objective criticism of the game. No. That's something I would personally like and find appealing. Yeah, I just, I think, but I think the, um, I think if we're going to take that down to something that's a bit more of a practical level, right? Something that is, that is kind of like applicable and not just, uh, and not just like, here's how, I, here's how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. I think it comes down to, there are so many games in this Souls-like genre now yeah. that you better stand out, right? Mm -hmm. And that just doesn't stand out. Yeah. Whatever that might be that you do to stand out, who knows? Yeah, it could but be gameplay, could be look, could be whatever. Let's get into a little bit of business news, Anthony. Well, we are a business channel. We're a business show in particular. Uh, I, of course, passed the bar in the state of Virginia. And uh, I got my uh, MBA on the streets. This is my, this is my university shirt. Barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> you graduated uh, from the school of barbecue. Barbecue in Flavor Town. <laughs> Bequay. Graduated in Flavor Town. I from did the school graduate of barbecue. from Flavor Town University. Uh, it's it's less of a it's less of a degree and more of a certification program. Yes, but I am certified to travel the country looking for the most delicious diners, drive-ins, and dives. Now most of them are in the Burbank Airport. Mm -hmm. Anyways, everybody, let's talk about Amaranth, shall we? Sure. We have covered. A whole lot of Amaranth stories in the past on this show, but this one's really, really fascinating to me. Um, Amaranth has put up some kind of vague posts about what's happening here, but the overall story is that Amaranth intends to quit OnlyFans. And buy Steel Rising. 
Specifically, she's stopping making original content for OnlyFans. She intends to make like a large enough backlog to uh, post content definitively uh, for a while. But as of June, she will be quitting OnlyFans. This is a uh, this is a move that we saw coming for her. Yeah, this is a move that we talked about because she has been investing heavily into a bunch of different things, whether it's uh, physical businesses, real estate or even uh, other online platforms. Uh, she was not she was not going to do this forever. She had a plan. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's been very interesting to see her enact that plan. So the tweet that she posted was end of an era. It's time to stop being an e-girl cold turkey and quit OnlyFans in June. Going all out until then with a uh, uh, then we'll go out with a bang grand finale. It's it's joke because First mm -hmm. up, uh, I just made three hundred and fifty to four hundred thousand dollar investment in content on Twitch. And you're all invited. We'll announce at the end of the week. So the announcement has not come out for what that is yet. Bless. Um, and I'm very, very curious to see. Do you think she's? Um, uh, do you think she is she investing in in ch in channels? Is she creating original content for her channel? She said in content on Twitch. Yeah. I don't think that she is investing in content on her channel. I think the end game for Amaranth is not wanting to be on camera. Right. Um, if you watched her interview that she did with Anthony Padilla, she was like, "I'm smart. I'm a business person. That's what I am." Mm -hmm. Um. We would happily take an investment from Amaranth. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes, thank you very much. So she hasn't made the announcement of what it is yet, but five hours ago she tweeted three upcoming announcements, not including a third gas station that I just inked. Seven uh, second Seven Eleven. Yeah, she bought a gas. Yeah, she bought the gas station of Seven Eleven, an inflatable pool company after yeah. starting the. Uh... But she bought another one. She's had two right. up to this point that we've covered. She just bought a third. Oh, one. Oh, a third one. Yes, a third one. She bought the inflatable pool company after starting the hot tub meta. Mm -hmm. And she did recently make a huge investment in Activision Blizzard stock. Which is interesting. Look, she said she's here to make money. She's not making moral, she's not making moral choices, but- no, Money uh, choices. Uh, yep. Don't, maybe don't. I mean, it's, I mean, it probably is a decent bet if yeah. Microsoft is going to come in and clean it up and turn it into, uh, you know, just another Microsoft. Like after that, it's it's a good money investment, I guess, in the Mm, amaranth yeah out of all the things people get angry at amaranth for right this is the first one this is the first one where i'm like amaranth mm -hmm. don't invest in activision blizzard yeah i will say um this twitter account popped up for streamer royale um and they announced um a, amaranth as a lead producer hmm. which is very very interesting do they have what does streamer royale say in in their bio what are they it says the official Twitter of the new show, Streamer Royale. Watch your favorite streamers compete head to head to be crowned the champion. Champion of what? Who knows? They only have two tweets. Champion of Streamer Royale. They said the event of the summer is coming soon. Make sure to follow so you don't miss the details. So she retweeted that, but that is clearly not the announcement as after the fact. She said three announcements coming. We'll see. I'm very intrigued to see what comes next. Amaranth is clearly like a brilliant business person in the, you know, capitalist hellscape that we live in. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious what these announcements are. I'm very curious what those investments were in. Um, I would love it if more creators uh, did things towards the top of things like creator funds, mm -hmm. uh, things like grants to creators, reinvesting in that. If more channels were like, hey, I'll take a profit. I'm investing so you can make your content. Yeah. We've seen a good few different top creators offer these things and i would love to see more of that yeah uh this is this is it's nice to see because normally when somebody gets this big on a platform they they kind of just they kind of just spend their money and flex and waste it and then disappear um it's very yeah. nice to see somebody who's a little bit smarter about it and somebody who's thinking about the entire ecosystem as a whole yeah um speaking of somebody who doesn't fucking do that Elon Musk. Get fucked. Get fucked, buddy. Now, you may remember that in 2018, uh, Elon Musk got in trouble. He got in trouble for tweeting that he was going to take Tesla private, and he tweeted, funding secured. Now, he got into big trouble with that because Tesla is a publicly traded company. You can't just say things like that. It affects the stock price. You screw up the money 
and the finances of every single one of your investors when you do that, right? You manipulate markets. Now, he manipulates markets all the time, but he does it Elon through loopholes. Elon Musk loves to manipulate a market. And honestly, even when he doesn't do it through loopholes, he's simply not afraid of the fines. Um, so he, he got in trouble for that. He, got, he had to pay a $40 million settlement. Whoopity ding. He's got billions of dollars. He doesn't care. Mm -hmm. He's going to keep manipulating markets. And that's actually what he's in trouble for now. People are still, bless you, uh, a group of Tesla shareholders are actually taking Elon Musk to court again over the 2018 tweet. And it's not just the tweet. It's because after he paid his fine, he has kept lying about that tweet. Um, he has been on TED Talks this year spreading falsehoods about what's going on. Now, the SEC, he says that the SEC knew that his funding was secured, but they pursued an active public investigation nonetheless at the time. That's false. He did not secure funding to privately buy Tesla. That was a lie. But because he's already paid his fine, he can say whatever he wants now, theoretically. But a group of Tesla investors are actually saying, no, you have to stop lying about this and mm -hmm. we're going to take you to court. Yeah. Um, so it's, he's such an asshole. He's trying to make it look like, no, no, no. It was all going the way he said it was going to go. The SEC had no reason to investigate him because it was all true. And they knew it was true. He filed. He knew they knew there was no filing. There was no paperwork. Mm -hmm. He never did anything like that. Um, he says, now it makes it look like I lied when I did not, in fact, lie. Yes, you did. <laughs> he says, I was forced to. Lying about lying. And he says, I was forced to admit I lied to save Tesla's life. And that's the only reason. Now, that's interesting. He didn't say, I was forced to say I lied. I he, said, I, he said, I was forced to admit I lied. Oh. Baby, that's what we call. At least get better a, That's at a little this. bit of a slip, baby. Um, like, at least get better at lying. Um, his attorney dismissed the claim saying nothing will ever change the truth, which is that Elon Musk was considering taking Tesla private and could have that's listen, whether he was considering taking Tesla private or not is not what's that's not, not what story. people are arguing. I'm considering getting a sandwich after the show. I people may or may care. not get a sandwich. That's not what it's about. Right. But if you were like. I'm considering getting a sandwich, and the way you were considering doing it uh, was robbing a sandwich shop, <laughs> then that would be the story. <laughs> right. The issue isn't that you wanted a sandwich. The issue is that you robbed a sandwich shop to get it. Yeah. He's, it, the, you could, my saying that I want a sandwich doesn't make everybody scramble to sell me sandwiches. Right. It is, oh shit, we got to get rid of sandwiches. No. If he, say, like, if he says, I'm taking Tesla private, Everything for Tesla's stock changes. Right. And he is a massive owner and he buys and sells his Tesla stock. Right. When you pull out a machete and you say, I'm going to get a sandwich. And everyone's like, take your very, sandwich. It's a very different situation Have it. than if you just said, I'm going to go get yeah. my yeah. If I walk into a subway, if I walk into a subway with a machete, I'm like, I'm getting a sandwich. They're like, all right. Get your sandwich. We'll get you a sandwich. Here, have all the sandwiches. And yet when I walk in and I say, hello, I would like a turkey sandwich, it's perfectly fine. It's fine. Because it's a different situation. <laughs> and it'll always be just fine. And I've it's never going to be very good. I've only ever walked into one subway with a machete. Okay? It's not like it's a thing that happens. It's, it, it has happened, but it's not like it's a thing that happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, out of business and into Hollywood, which uh, crosses over with a little bit of business because we have to talk about um, the racist wizards. <laughs> hey, what are those turf wizards up to? Are they are they still uh, anti-Semitic? Yes. Cool. Uh, Great. Um, so Fantastic Beasts 3 opened this week at beautiful words. 
A franchise low for Harry Potter. Uh, I am of the opinion that is still far too much money going bam, to J.K. Bam, Rowling. Bam, bam. Forty-three million dollars is still so much money, more money than Fantastic That's, Beasts should be receiving. But it is very low for a Harry Potter movie. It's still a lot of money for a movie, but it's nowhere near what it probably needs. Uh, the first Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them launched at seventy-four million North America. Uh, Crimes of Grindelwald uh, got sixty-two mil. Uh, listen, go away. Go away. What, you waited until the third movie to get rid of Jonathan Depstein? I love you all very much. Um, don't see Fantastic Beasts. And maybe shame your friends if they are a little bit. Shame your friends. Like maybe privately. Maybe not publicly. Yeah, and don't, don't bully anybody. No, just be like. But like shame them a little hey, bit. I don't go see those movies anymore because of this X, Y, and Z. Maybe you should reconsider it as well. Remember, you can read another book. I recommend a boo hiss. Yeah, <laughs> boo. Boo hiss. Boo. Not seeing it. Uh, so uh, congratulations on your spectacular failure. <laughs> Fantastic beasts. Um, Secrets of Dumbledore cost $200 million to produce. Uh, tens of millions more to promote the film to yeah. audiences. Um, Secrets of Dumbledore is going to be reliant on international box office now. Um, go away. Hey, go away. That's it. Go away. We've only got a couple more minutes. Um, <laughs> and in the strangest story to end on, HBO Max is doing a Wonder Twins series? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. And I wonder how, like, here's the thing. How, mm, what's the tone? Mm, I'm so, because, all right, they did a comic book a couple years back uh -huh. that had kind of like a sillier tone, but was still like Wonder Twins and a little serious and a little deeper, but it's still funny. I just, what does this show look like, I wonder? And how does... Ken Patchy said, are they the ones that transform? Yes. yes. You do a little bing, bing, bing. One turns bing, into bing. any animal. What is this? And Activate. one turns into any form of water. And that can be taken so loosely. So loosely. My favorite thing about the Wonder Twins is when one of them would turn into an eagle to fly away, and the other one would turn into water and get into a bucket, and the eagle would fly with a bucket in its feet. The yeah. Wonder Twins are so fucking weird, and I love that they're getting a show. I think they've got to, like, adjust their powers a little bit. I hope they don't. I hope I get to see a live-action eagle with a bucket of water <laughs> just flying around. So, the other interesting thing about this is that we got some casting. They have cast Riverdale's KJ Appa, Archie himself. Hot Archie? Yes. Hot Archie is going to be Zan? They cast KJ Appa and Isabel May as Zan and Jaina um, in the Wonder Twins HBO Max series. So this is silly, then. This is camp. They did say it's a comedy, yes. Yes, They okay. definitely said it's a comedy. Um, I've never seen KJ Appa in anything funny or do anything funny on Riverdale. That's not like an insult. Riverdale is just not a funny show, now, except for the way that it's very funny and it's not supposed to be. I think Riverdale, I think Riverdale is funny. It's but absurdist. It's absurdist. That's the thing. The, it's not so much that the characters get to do funny things or deliver funny right. lines. Uh, Cheryl Blossom gets to deliver funny lines. Yes. Um, K KJ Appa does not. Archie, Archie just gets to sit there and be like, Oh, and I think like that might be like a it's cool scrunched eyebrow. Yeah. Oh, and he might get to do that as Zan. Like maybe that's his whole thing in this too. I would love to see him taking things very seriously. For the seriously. last like four scenes, uh, Archie's just mad. Yeah. All the time. Always mad. Always mad. Always mad. Because people don't know the thrilling highs and excruciating lows of high, high school, school football. football. So true. All right, everybody. That is all of the show that we have time for today. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. We are very happy to be back. We missed you last week. We did, BBs, but we're back all week this week. So that means we will see you on Wednesday and Friday uh, right here at this very time, which is always exactly 8 a.m. Not a moment after. If it is on your clock, you should have that checked out. 
We love you so much. Thank you to everybody who supported us during the show today. We're going to go through and we're going to go through the list of everybody that did so in just a moment here. But in the meantime, Anthony, where can they find you on the internet? Oh, you can find me everywhere at A Carboni, except for here on Twitch, where I'm at Anthony Carboni. Twitch, you cowards, it's mine. Give it back to me. Uh, you can find me on my science comedy podcast. Uh, we have concerns with Jeff Kanata. Check that out at wehaveconcerns.com. And uh, of course, uh, this Friday, you can catch me for the freaking season finale. I can't believe how quickly it came up. Of Failed Save, our uh, our live play D&D 5e series. It's the, it's the end of the season. It is the end of the season. It's also, not- the way that Vin said our finale on Friday, last Friday, made it sound like it was the end of the show. It's not the end of the show. He it's does that every finale. year. I know, he does that every year. He does that every season. He's like, and here comes the finale. And we're like, no, no, no. No, 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 no. No, no. no it's a season finale. We just started a new campaign. There's a lot more story to tell. Uh, we will likely be offline for eight weeks and then we'll be back. That's kind of the schedule we're trying to fall into with Failed Safe. So, you know, we're coming back. But come see... Uh, but is there is there going to be a little is there a little Bane's break still going during the break? Or Bane's break is still going. So yeah, mm-hmm. Bane's break has a twelve episode season because we were funded on Indiegogo. So mm-hmm. Bane's break is releasing episode five tomorrow. So Bane's break will get you through about half of this failed save break, which is nice. And then um, Damsel's Dice and everything nice. We'll be back as well. We're not leaving you hanging. We would never leave. We've you always hanging. got stuff for you. We would never leave you hanging, Sage fuck is you up to you can find me everywhere on the internet at not sage i stream on my channel on days that will be maybe a schedule eventually uh you can also find me around where am i i'm on the D channel i'm on stuff i'm on smosh and uh here mostly yeah come and watch me on bane's break tomorrow at 6 p.m pacific um check out our indiegogo if you haven't that's a great way to support us we're very close to our next uh, stretch goal and we're doing a big stream on Wednesday which fuck it I'm announcing it's going to be at least eight hours uh, raising money for the final 24 hours of the uh, Bane's Break Indiegogo please don't tell Kaylee it's Kaylee she's mad fuck okay uh, great we gotta go thank you to Havoc Girl for resubscribing for 10 months said now I want a sandwich go get a sandwich do not bring a machete Gwen XYZ resubscribing for two months thank you for coming back for another month Zomino with a very generous donation. So kind of you with 8860 to make it a nice even number. Flannel fries with the reset for 18 months said not proof that I like you. Disagree. Disagree. It seems like you like us. Maxter with the primes up for two months said it's too early. You're right. That is the name. Dagger is under my feet because he knows Anthony is trying to pick him up. And he's like, please protect me from him, Sage. Grumpy Steen for 19 months. That is so many months. Cassidy Weaver with 100 bits said never pickles. Agreed. Couldn't agree more. Always pickles. Danny Boy's Calling Pipe said lucky number seven with a seven month resub. Thank you for being the best and only morning show in existence. Thank you very much. And you're correct. Martinis 42 at six for seven months said thank you guys for all the time and effort that you put into making the best and only morning show. Never pickles. Always I love pickles. all my never pickles. Always pickles. 17 months from Cassidy Weaver with that sub said 8 a.m. is eternal. Absolutely correct. Thank you for your foundational understanding of time. G Rex 13 for 14 months. That's so many. Shiny Marigold with the 13 months. That's a pixel circus year. Yeah, woo. Said just settling in. Don't mind me. Never mind. Uh, I, Kristen, for 11 months and King Sassafras for three months said, we three months in and maybe three more months. I will be caught up. Uh, maybe in three more months, I will be caught up on failed saves. There's a lot of failed save to catch up on and you all should do that. Take the opportunity. Um, We just want to say thank you to everybody for your support. As you know, donations go uh to whoever you see on screen that's us uh we are not very gainfully employed so we appreciate that uh also uh your subscriptions and uh patreon memberships go to the entire network as a whole to um i don't know keep the shed from sinking into the swamp that it's on that it sits on it sure feels like it's sinking (laughs) you would think that the like um sinking of the swamp would give it a little less like shake in this uh, stability but when we go like this the whole shed still shakes no but it's it's because Um, it's because it's it's like an edward gory or like or like nightmare before christmas situation where the shed just twists and turns up right it's very so uh that goes to keeping our channel working uh thank you everybody supported us obviously there are also tons of non-monetary ways to support the show whether you can't don't want to or already have 
Um, you can do things like join the Discord because it's totally free. It not only supports the show, but also is a great way to engage with our very fucking cool community. Engage um, with them. They're fucking cool. Because y'all are incredible and wonderful and lovely to talk to. I personally would know. Uh, you can do things like tell a friend about the show, post about it on social media, make a clip, make a GIF, make an art. I don't know. I don't um, know. It always makes our day. Uh, we're just glad that you enjoy it. And when Whatever. people are going to go and make something because of something we made, that is a very special culmination of something you can only get on the internet. You really. can do whatever you want to support us except for bring a machete into a sandwich shop. No machetes in a sandwich shop. We love you very much. and We will see you on Wednesday. You can have one machete in a sandwich no, shop. No machetes. No. Not one.